Hello and welcome back to my live stream exploration of the hard career mode in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.2. This is an edited for YouTube version of my Twitch live stream from May the 6th. I'm cutting out all the slow parts for YouTube while keeping as much of the live commentary as possible. Please do follow me on Twitch to get notified when I'm streaming. My current schedule is Saturday and Sunday at 1pm Pacific Time, 8pm GMT, and also Wednesday at 4pm Pacific Time, 11pm GMT. In any case, I'll post my upcoming stream time in the title of my channel. Now, on to the live commentary from May the 6th. Let me take a look and... Yeah, okay, so this fuel tank is here. That's what I was wondering. That's... Hello, Fire Viper. So, what I figure is that we still got the 30 part limit, of course. Max parts for 30. Basically, once I unlock the, the flight planning here, and also unlock the more than 30 parts here, I'm basically ready to go. I've got about, uh, so I need 400,000 more funds minimum in order to do both of those unlocks. Now, with the 30 part constraint, it's tough to do a moon landing mission with a Kerbal, but I can reduce the number of parts on my existing rocket by by having these tanks and also I can uh, instead of using the solid rocket boosters I can use liquid rocket boosters in, and uh, use the fuel duct to do asparagus staging so I think that is my plan so with the science I've got even though some of this other stuff is tempting uh, really the, the ant isn't as useful as its radial cousins it's really these guys that I would want Though, so, um, no, they seem to be uh, nerfed down. I thought they'd be 315 as well, but they're only 290 on vacuum. That's not as good. Though, uh, still, they could be used as an ascent stage from the moon. If, uh, But I don't think we'll get to that. I think we'll have to just deal with the LV-909. So, this is probably the research I'm going for. Let me just check. Now, landing a Kerbal on the moon without these landing struts might be a little bit dodgy. We'll have to go with the light landing struts and those... I don't know how... I've never actually tried landing on the moon with those. Of course, I've actually tried landing on the moon without landing struts at all, but that's a totally separate issue. So, we're going to have to use these to help a Kerbal stay upright. That's going to be interesting. Hmm. But, anyway, I've got to research this one. Okay, and I'm definitely gonna buy the fuel ducts and this tank and while people are popping in I'm going to rebuild our our existing rocket. Turning this into a lander is tricky. We definitely can't carry both these tanks. I mean all three of those tanks. Basically, that's what we're talking about, unless we want to carry another engine with us. I don't know. Hopefully, it'll just balance on, an on the engine. I don't know. Has anybody tried this one before? Like, uh, landing with these tiny struts? I'm usually a bit more cautious about that, but I don't think... I'm eager to land on the moon now. This is unfortunately underweight. Oh, m maybe we could re... Maybe we could... Hmm. We could decouple auxiliary tanks, but that would cost additional parts, and we're, we're still limited to 30. I'll have to see. We could potentially put radial tanks and then decouple them. But I want to see how our part count works out. Okay, and... Well, between the gimbling engine and not gimbling engine, it'll, it'll make me feel safer I've got, if I've got the gimbals. Darn, without four engines, it's not gonna balance well on the pad, will it? Well, how about three? That's very traditional Kerbal. I'm trying to find the optimal situation here, but it's not gonna... I, I just have to put fuel ducts here. And that gives me 30 parts. Okay, so I'm gonna call this Gamma 1 first. Now I have to figure out how much Delta V I actually have. Okay, so the boosters give me 1,112. Then after those are gone. Well, so I've got uh, 3,700 or so. 
and then this final bit 2345 now let's see if I take out transit to the moon landing on the moon no I don't have enough I don't have enough to land on the moon like this fins are always a plus but I'm at the uh, three part limit here I can't go to if I add fins then I'll have to toss off something else um, yeah let me let me check our contracts because I don't think we've picked up a contract to land on the moon yet uh, not with uh, Kerbal that would be a plant a flag to con contract so basically I'm looking like we don't have enough Delta V so we need to unlock some other technology unless you guys think I've got enough Delta V please do mention that if you think so rescuing a Kerbal is also very interesting but it's sort of time consuming and we've done we've done some satellite contracts now so return to Kerbin from a flyby of Minmus Well, that's pretty easy, isn't it? Okay, so, uh, so yes, I think uh, we've done a moon flyby. We've actually gotten to orbit around the moon and done EVA, well, we've done a EVA around the moon. But this contract uh, would allow an EVA of Minmus, which we haven't done. So we haven't done a Minmus EVA, and so maybe we should do that first. And then we'll get the the science for Minmus EVA. Let me just double check. We haven't done anything. What what haven't we done on Minmus yet? We've only done temperature scans for Minmus, so we've got a lot of science available there. Okay, so that's our new plan. We can test out this rocket. You you meant Minmus, yeah. Okay, so uh, we are on the same page, and. The only question is whether I dump the the LV T forty fives and go with the LV T thirties. We don't need lander legs for flyby of Minmus. What we could do is put goo containers because we haven't done that around Minmus, so we will restore the goo containers which we originally had. All right, well that looks fine. We'll test out this. One. You can reduce another goo. Containers that you need if you take Bob, but then there's no SAS. Yeah, well, I sort of need SAS. I'm not that good a pilot. Um, what I want is that engine down there. Let's see how well it gets into orbit with just these, and then if it turns out that it's uh, it's just lacking a little bit of delta V, then the LVT-30 would be better because the LVT-30 has the better sea level ISP here. Oh, darn, it's Bill. Why is it Bill? Yeah, Bill's on the top of the pecking order, I forget. Bill is right at the top there. We need... we need pretty much anybody else. Well, except for Bob. Let's have Valentina do it. The, the difference in XP is not that much, anyway. I'm sort of overpowered on the engines I'm using at the base here. I really don't need that much thrust. The blader is right out. It's tipping a little bit. I don't like that. Okay, uh, we'll wait for the wobble to stop. And... Okay, let's go. Ooh. That's more like it. I uh, should have probably slapped on a solar panel since I was below 30. Yeah. But with a Kerbal in, it's not so bad. Come on, let's turn here. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, very inefficient right now. I I turn too quickly. I think this is not so bad. I think uh, 
just with the two stages we can get the whole thing to orbit. But we still don't have enough Delta V in the top stage to make a lunar landing like this. Still have a couple of weeks before your finals, but you only have two of them this semester. Ah. <laughs> You've been going to school for 10 years, so it's old hat by now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah, finals. Yeah, you get you get into the swing of finals pretty quickly. First few times it's a little bit uh a little bit tough, but after that uh it's not that bad. Depends on what classes you have, of course. Some of them are more intense than others. Your hardest final is tomorrow, not looking forward to it. What is it? Out of curiosity. Quantum mechanics. Oh, yes. Well, I've definitely never taken a final in quantum mechanics, though uh, I have watched lectures in it. Uh, I've at least done that. And I have, uh, I don't know, which one is it? It's not an idiot's guide. It's, uh, oh, uh, yes, it's uh, quantum physics for dummies, right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the limit of my knowledge of quantum physics. Though quantum physics for dummies is not an easy text to go through, mind you. I think they might have been uh, overshooting the mark on the four dummies thing there. Just tell the professor that you're both at the final and not at the final and him grading it. No, you can't do that to a quantum physics professor. They know how to calculate the probability of you doing that. <laughs> uh... Uh, uh, that that is a low probability situation you're describing there, Ambridge. Quantum mechanics is only taught by people who have never had trouble with quantum. Uh, no, I thought everybody had. I, mean, I thought uh, uh, I, I thought it was a famous physicist who said that if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics, right? Okay, I think a little bit of time warping will get us to a position where we should transfer to Minmus. Um, yeah, that, that looks almost about right. Okay. I think I'll, uh, I'll risk it. I'll keep it in this view because I don't want to overshoot like I have done before. You'll notice I'm taking off SAS when I turn, and that's because I want to save electric charge since we don't have a solar panel. At least math, physics, etc. is not open to interpretation. You got that right. But uh, actually, the grading is easier when it uh, is open to interpretation because they're, they, they, they can't ding you for your interpretation. So, uh, I speak as a history major, right? So, I mean, uh, just because you disagree with uh, your professor on a point of history, they can't, they can't uh, grade you off for that as long as you've got sources and all. As long as you explain your point of view. You're in applied psychology. Everything is open to interpretation. Well, I don't know much about applied psychology. Okay, that's the end of that, the launch stage. Graduate high school in 2009. Won't be done until 2019. What are you going for? Oh, moon, don't get in my way. Oh, the moon is... Oh, it, if it prioritizes the moon's encounter, I won't uh, be able to see my encounter with Minmus. Uh, not that I'm likely to get one with this sort of inclination. Um, oh, I have to set Minmus as a target. Forget about that. Okay, so we'll have to do a correction here. And I can't make a maneuver, so I'm just going to have to hope for the best. Okay. PhD in nanotech engineering. Well, there's a future there, at least. At least there's a future there. Imagine how I feel, a history major. Crustacean evolution. Well, you can make some sci-fi novels about that, if you can extrapolate further. This is not a good way of doing things. Hold on. What evolutionary niche does going good with butter feel, <laughs> Phil? Ah, uh, 
Well, I think that feels more of a evolutionary niche for us than for the crustacean in question. The fact that we can eat crustaceans with butter serves our purposes more, I think. Anyway, uh, okay, well, that's a pretty close pass for Minmus. Looks good. All right, Valentina, you're going to head out to Minmus and do some science for us. You've got goo containers, even. And you're not consuming electric charge, so all is well. Okay, so here's the situation that happens occasionally where Kerbal will give me the moon encounter as uh, preferentially, but I know there's still a Minmus encounter, or I think there's still a Minmus encounter there. I'm gonna trust that there's still a Minmus encounter there. Please let there be a Minmus encounter there. So the terms of the contract were simply return from Kerbin from a flyby of Minmus. It didn't even have to be a crude vessel, of course. I wonder how they keep track of that. But, well, I mean, I've seen the persistent file, but this is a particularly interesting sort of way of doing it. Okay, so pretty much everything in the cardioids shrimp taxa, they are the ones with the big muscle-filled pleons. Okay, I understood some of those words. I have no background in biology. It is my least familiar science. Observe mystery goo. Gotta keep that. And now the tricky part is having Valentina get out without... Okay, slide down a bit. Okay, now EVA report. Keep that data board. <laughs> the Zoidberg comment too. Oh dear. Crew report. Um, I better not transmit because I don't have uh, solar panel to restore electric charge. Okay, so we're all done at this position. Though probably probably transmitting that and doing the one close to Minus. Uh, we'll, we'll probably be back here to do... well yeah maybe I should transmit... how much do crew reports cost though as far as electric charge? Could be dangerous. Okay also dangerous is not knowing exactly... oh yeah that's a little bit too close. So yeah, probably in order to attract viewers, I should be doing bigger things. I've, I've been, of course, uh, doing career mode means that I've been doing very small things. I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, it's the big, big projects that seem to attract most attention here on Twitch. On your first EVA with Val, she glitched and got shot out of the Kerbal system. <laughs> oh my god. On your first mission, uh, first EVA with her, not first mission, first EVA. That is harsh. Well, I'm always worried about them when I send them out on EVA. I'm hoping that eventually we'll get far enough in this career mode that I'll start being able to build nice stuff. But it's, it looks like they've made career mode quite a lot harder than I remembered it, so I've been caught by surprise how difficult this has ended up being. And I'm spending a lot of time with these little rockets. I mean, I know I'm not the only one. The, the monetary constraints in hard mode are really tough now. Okay, keep data. You like seeing the beginning bits. Everyone always skips them. Well, yeah, well, that's my worry, you see, because I think everyone always skips them because a lot of people don't like watching them. <laughs> I mean, I like the beginning bits, too. That's why I do them oh, every time, every single version, I uh, I do the beginning bits, right? I mean, you see, uh, maybe you see my videos. I, I always do the beginning bits. Oh, she's, she's floating up again. Keep data bored. Okay. Second successful EVA. So that's from space above Minmus's lowlands, but since we can't get into orbit, uh, according to contract, we have to be in a flyby of Minmus, so we can't get into orbit, and I can't really see what the biomes are on this dark side now. So I guess that's it. I could try transmitting the existing crew report. Uh, review stored data. Oh, uh, right, I have to go out, grab the crew report, get back, no, forget it. 
I'm going to. I'm just going to continue and get back home. We've got some good science out of this. You wish they would change that crew report thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why we can't just take multiple crew reports. Okay, I don't want to get too low in carbon. I'm, I'm coming in like a comet here. Yep, okay. Well, obviously we have a lot more fuel than we needed for this mission, but that's because I made this in order to do a lunar landing. And I still think that we don't have quite enough to land a Kerbal on the moon and bring them back. Landing the Kerbal on the moon is easy. We've got enough of that. But bringing them back, I don't think so. Well, I guess I guess the Kerbals are a rare, rare species or civilization that developed rocket engines before they developed wheels. <laughs> I guess like there are those out there, right? Such things have happened. They're the only species who invented the aerosol can before the wheel. That's a, that's Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? Okay, here we go. Let's see, first aero break. So, uh, I still haven't uh, come to grips with the aerodynamics, so we were way past minimums. We were pretty much on escape. We were in a comet-like trajectory, and we're seeing it bring us down pretty sharply right now. I'm not expecting it to bring us all the way down. But then again, uh, let's have, well, Val has, uh, has the ability, so let's have her hold it retrograde, even though it'll take a little bit more electric charge. I think we've got the electric charge fine now. Okay, well, that wasn't too bad. Brought us in fairly well. Unfortunately, we're going to be coming down on the dark side as it is. But, well, actually, I could get into a stable orbit and just decide where I want to come down, I guess. Let's uh, let's do the whole thing. Let's fix our orbit up and and pick our landing spot this time. So yeah, I'll try and land it close to the KSC, but I still haven't done air braking tests in this version. So I want to lift my orbit up just a little bit in order to. Well, I would. Yeah, I've got a lot of Delta V. It's fine. I should do this and the inclination change at the same time. Which way is that? I want a 120 kilometer test orbit here. Okay. That's close enough. Okay. I think I have enough delta V to bring this orbit down now. If I don't, I'll have to just bring this side down. Uh, I just barely don't have enough, I think. Oh well. Air braking with the new system is a bit tough, especially if an oddly shaped shift. Have to check that COM me out. Well, definitely can't be going with a bad COM, but I don't have enough fuel, I don't think, to get into a perfectly circular test orbit here. So I'm just gonna bring her down. Unfortunately it is like the opposite side of the planet from KSC, but again I want to bring Val down where uh, I hope Yeah the the planet will rotate. It'll be fine. Okay. Where she'll be safe. Okay, I'm not planning on doing any more with my engine, so off it goes. And let's just hope nothing overheats. Your Kerbals have learned the hard way that a vehicle with the name Test is never good. <laughs> well, that that's, that's honesty in advertising right there. Let's have Val uh, hold it retrograde. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, right. Uh, uh, it's either time warp or holding it retrograde, but not both, apparently. Yeah, if I turn off SES, it should. It should. But, but <laughs> I'm not willing to take that risk. Again, overdid it on the blader. I should really dump more of that to make the stuff more efficient. Ooh. 
Uh, command pawns don't require a heat shield, right? Uh, I, I don't think, strictly speaking. Uh, just for safety's sake, I'm putting it on because it's a Kerbal in. But I could probably bring it down without the uh, heat shield, without any trouble. Okay, so lots of science. Land her on the other side of the planet, so not much recovered. But three experience gained, and we got some, some much needed funds. So now, I'm eyeing heavy rocketry. See, I've I've got a limit of thirty parts, and I'm wondering whether I should just get the skipper, which will save, because we've already got the tanks, right? We've got these tanks, and land on the moon. I think that's my plan. Okay. Let's see what our contracts have to say about this. Again? Oh, uh, this is from Orbit of Minmus. I don't want to do the same thing again, but that's that's pretty... Okay, well, we'll do that eventually. Form temperature. Oh yeah, that's that one. Science day from surface of the moon. Well, if we're gonna land on the moon, we might as well get that. Go for the science experiments first. Yeah, I I usually do go for the science experiments first, but I've I want to land on the moon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, how do I make the staging on this work out for me? Well, it's going to be an odd-looking rocket. Okay, so uh, I'm concerned that I don't have a way of making an elegant rocket, basically, is what I'm at right now. Because I don't have any sort of th tank to smooth out these lines. I wonder what the aerodynamics will do if I do this. That's not very efficient, though. in terms of part. Ah, that is horrible. Don't look, people. This is bad. Let me just see whether it is worthwhile at all or not. Oh, that's a thousand five hundred delta V right there. That's not too bad. So, uh, now this. Two thousand eight hundred eighty-six. Okay, that's a good start. Struts, well, I don't have those struts. I have these struts, but that's not good because they've got mass. Yeah, I would love struts. I want struts right now, but I don't have struts. Batteries we've got. What we probably should get is a solar panel. Just the one. Okay, this is this is dodgy business right here. I'm not too sure this is gonna work out right. Cause we've got serious, serious bad drag and inelegance there. I'm not gonna put Valentina in this mess. Guzber. Okay, so this is going to be probably very bad. But we've got abort op options here. We can abort by separating the capsule and its engine off. Uh, well, let's call this Delta-1. Persisting with my naming convention. And let's see if it actually stands up on the launch pad. Uh, is there anything else I want to do with this? I'll drop the goo containers. We're trying to land on the moon. It's probably too much to take them, but I'll take a thermometer to the surface. Okay, now let's go.